the primary Please go ahead, Karin. Yes, I'm just waiting in this bit. Uh, it's for it's for here in France. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, I am honored and pleased to uh, welcome you all, members of uh, Open Education Global. We are here to welcome all participants. There may be sustainable members, institutional members, or individuals. And um, what you have registered, and we are very, very happy to welcome you and have this unique opportunity to see you now in this general meeting that is dedicated to modify the bylaws, but give us a, a, a way to talk about our current activities too. So I am just waiting for more to come. We'll wait for a few minutes. Hello, James Worry. I see many well-known names and uh, I'm so happy to also see new faces and names. This is really nice. Maybe while we are waiting, you can already begin with um, what we'll be asking later, which is your name, your institution, and your land acknowledgement. This is a tradition and a suggestion by Connie Blomgren from Canada, and that is typical for all our community in Canada to acknowledge where you live, and that it was uh, before you came, there were indigenous people and to recognize the fact that it had another name and other people were there before you. But you can take it as any land acknowledgement and not on only your name and institution, but say where you are just today, what time it is for you. So it's nice to have a chat where we share those information, waiting for the, uh, for the others. No. Thank you, James. It's an icebreaker, indeed. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll um, are almost there. We're just waiting a very last minute to have everyone come. For some people, it's very late at night. And we'll um, take care that we end up really in an hour and a half. Um, there are many things to say. But uh, we also want to give you the floor and, and that we hear from you at the end of the meeting and that we can we take this opportunity to also exchange and hear more about our members directly that may sometimes not be able to join us at conference. Hello, Eva. Hello, everyone. Good. So let's begin. Again, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I am very honored and pleased to meet you all together for this uh, general meeting of the members of Open Education Global. Open Education Global is a 
first uh, legal entity, <laughs> not first, but at least it's uh, what we are aiming to do today. It's to work on the governance and change the bylaws. But of course, it's much more. It's a community, and the the bylaws are are a way to uh, to make our organization work uh, together with first the staff, the boards, and you all representative of institutional members or representative of, of sustainable members and, and finally individuals who are allowed to also be members of Open Education Global. If you have just arrived, we have asked in the chat to please present yourself and remind if you are representative of an institution or where you work, if you are an individual member, and to tell us more about your land and where you live, or what time it is where you are just now. The agenda of uh, this meeting, uh, we are of course in point one, it is the opening by Open Education President of the Board of Directors. I am Perrine de Quetlebon. I work at the University of Lille in the north of France. Uh, I am in charge of open education and digital identity, which means also micro-credentials, open badges, and uh, the transformation, digital transformation of the diploma. Uh, the second point will be to represent you, um, all the board of directors and the staff. Then we will um, present you, I will present you uh, the main modification uh, to the bylaws of Open Education Global and uh, ask the institutional and sustainable members to vote for them. Then I will give the floor to our co interim co directors, co executive directors, Marcela and Igor. And uh, they will present you the launch of the election process um, for the next uh, election of the directors of the board and some updates on the current activities of the organization. And finally, you will be, we will be able to answer any questions or hear about what you would have to say very easily. And then we'd be happy to close the assembly and remit you or keep in contact if necessary in the, in the, in the future. So the board of directors um, is uh, one um, institution that is very important to the organization because uh, you elected, you members um, elected year after year people who are dedicated to open education uh, in their own environment, but want to take a step further and represent also the movement and their engagement at global level. So I told you I was from France. I present to you Penny Blomgren, who is from Canada, um, Lisa Young from the USA, Hu Tian Marian Wan from Taiwan, Kathy Kazli from the United States, Paola Corti from Italy, Martin Dugiamas from Australia, Rajiv Zanjani from Canada, Marisol Ramirez Montayo from Mexico, and Katsusuke Shigeta from Japan. Each of us is there, but not by chance, often they are representative of much more of than the individuals. I am thinking of Marianne, who is the representative of Open Courseware Taiwan, and a large consortium of universities dedicated to open education. And of course, we are we have uh, interim co-executive directors that are Igor Lesko from South Africa, a Slovakian from South Africa, and Marcela Morales from Mexico. I wanted to give a special thanks to Lisa. Lisa Young has been elected vice president in January 23. 
And she has been for more than 10 years dedicated to open education and making a fantastic impact uh, on open textbook in the United States. She works today at Maricopa, Maricopa Community College and she has achieved so much. And when I went through her the 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 election uh, press release that is on the on the Open Education Global website, I was struck to see what she said about coming to Open Education Global, stepping in and being elected first directors and then vice president. She has achieved so much for her own community in the United States, but for us too. I, can, I witness that and I thank you because you will be soon leaving at the end of this month of August. And uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly tell you how much you have helped us, Connie and myself in particular, uh, in the last year where we have been elected in September 23. Thank you, Lisa. And then, of course, we have this fantastic team uh, that works daily for the organization. And uh, without them, nothing would happen of those fantastic events and daily publishing <laughs> and uh, work on OEG Connect. This is the staff, Marcela Morales, Igor Lesco, Interim Co-Executive Director, but having much more to do also, not only <laughs> they, they do this task, but also the firm's task, and I thank them particularly for this. And Mario Badilla from Costa Rica, who is the creative director, Heather Blisha, who is the director of Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources, the CCC OER, the famous program from Virginia in the USA. Jan Gondal, who is the director of technology in uh, Slovakia. Ayla Ado Flood, who is the director of communication living in South Africa. Alan Levin, uh, that you often see thanks to OEG Connect, who, who, which is, he hosts fantastically. Lizietta, manager of CCOR communities. And finally, last but not least, Rachel Zong, as you know, the director of finance is very important, even if you don't see her very often. Thank you all for your dedication to the organization. Now let's go to the next point, which is on the bylaws. Um, the main objective of this, uh, of the, the modification in the bylaws was to simplify them and make them therefore more understandable to anyone who wanted to work with us and understand better how the governance uh, would go. Um, so therefore, we had to clarify the existence of individual members because we love the fact that we created this uh, new way of being a member of Open Education Global, but there was still no recognition, official recognition in the bylaws. And Therefore, we had to better organize how the individual members would work together with uh, the rights and, of, and involvement of institutional and sustainable members. And in the end, this was an opportunity to clarify also the, the role of the directors and, and of the committees. The general structure and purpose of the bylaws, and this has been sent to you by email, is consistent with the former version. Uh, we have, uh, of course, still we are in the in the state of Massachusetts in the United States, and we are a non-profit organization. I may also add that all the directors are fully benevolent, and uh, nobody gets a... Uh, uh, financial support in any way. If you if we go to a conference, it's our own institution 
who supports us in doing so. Um, I have, a, I will not read each sentence, but I can tell you that the, the world you are seeing expand equitable, affordable, inclusive access to education, enabling every person on earth to access and contribute, improve the quality of education, etc was a discussion between us where everyone wanted to add something and see that um, this is clear that we are still in the, in the same spirit than the founders of the movement 20 years ago, more than over 20 years ago. On the membership, eligibility and rights. So we have now those institutional voting members and the individual members. And the rest is on the website of Open Education Global, as it used to be. The difference between institutional voting members and individual members is that individual members don't pay any fees and therefore they don't vote. However, we want to recognize their huge contribution and that they are able to be elected as board of director. And this is Something that had not happened directly, but that had happened after, for example, Lena Patterson, our past president, um, uh, had come and, and she was elected for, for, for her institution. But then she left the institution and we were, of course, very happy that she could stay as an individual member. And so now this is set into stone. <laughs> The 21st version is also more inclusive of any members supporting open education values. Now uh, there is a specification for electronic voting and the uh, meeting notice timelines. And we have also foreseen that there is a delegation to the board to modify the bylaws in future if needed. Why? Because when we um, uh, tried to work with the bylaws. Uh, last version was uh, last modified in 2017, and it had become very difficult. They were difficult to read, and they were also referring to articles of association that were that were haven't been updated for a while. So we are happy, really, of the work we have done, and it was adopted unanimously by the board. Therefore. At this stage, do you have any questions on the bylaws? Good. I don't see any. So I go to next slide. So the, we have also decided about, about some difference uh, for the board of directors. Uh, the, it was um, there, there was there were three to thirteen directors, nine elected, four appointed, and uh, non-voting executive directorship. And now you have up to thirteen directors. Um, sorry, it's not true. I'm a bit tired. So now there will be nine elected directors and four appointed. Why? Because we wanted to have maybe a better representation of uh, many regions, and sometimes this doesn't come through with the vote. So this was a way to um, have the possibility to appoint two more directors from uh, other regions, in particular, or for any other reason that we thought. Uh, people with expertise in open education, with specific expertise in open education. And the tenure uh, is now three, ter three year terms instead of two. We can have regular meeting, we have at least four, and specific meetings when needed. So when you have a board of director, you have also a, um, officers and uh, there is the president, one or several vice presidents, the clerk and the treasurer. And uh, 
the more detailed now. The office is more detailed now. And of course, because we we have uh, as directors, we will be elected three years. The the officers will have office for three years too. But this is the main changes. Um, if you approve them or want to vote against or abstain, please take the link in the chat. Marcela will share it now. And only the institutional and sustainable members can vote in the current version of the bylaws. And Alan will check. Thank you, Alan, to check um, the votes and tell us the results. So if I, if I may interject for a second, Perrin, uh, maybe we can just say that we are going to take like three to four minutes for to allow people to vote um, and then conclude that process and announce the results right away as well, right? Okay. And, and just to also maybe reiterate that when we did send that communication out towards the end of July, we gave members the opportunity to review the bylaws and provide feedback or comments or let us know if they had any feedback or comments uh, during that period leading up to this meeting. And we have received no additional comments from members during this period. Absolutely. And um, of course, uh, we invited every members uh, for this meeting more than um, 30 days ago, which was the timeline provided by the current bylaws. We have uh, 10 votes in so far. Eleven. Thirteen. Yeah. Good care of sending not only the <laughs> former bylaws and the the 14. new bylaws. But also the a document that uh, summarizes the main changes too. Um, as the board of directors, we have also um, decided um, of transitional period for those who had been elected uh, two years. Uh, so that they can stay if they like for years, or for board members who have stayed for six years already, which is a free mandate of two years, that they can stay for another mandate because you can be elected up to nine years. So thank you very much for all who are here. I know it can seem boring to work upon bylaws, but we know how important this is and strategic for the governance. So thank you very much all who are there and follow up and now our voting. Thank you.
I think we might have reached a threshold of eligible voting members yeah. on the Yes, indeed. Do you want the results? Yes, please. Okay. We have uh, uh, the votes are 93.8% uh, for the amendments to the bylaws from 16 voters. So 15 for, one abstain. Thank you very much again for everyone. And uh, the bylaws are therefore, therefore adopted. We'll continue to work on the policy. It's a matter of uh, professionalism in the organization that has taken place a lot during Elena Patterson's mandate, which we are very grateful to for that. And um, we'll continue to work upon this um, it's um, transparency work and, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, the, poli the internal policies so that um, everything is as transparent as possible. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Marcela and Igor, who will uh, present you. Uh, yes, of course, sorry, uh, I had the last slide. I insisted to have these. I like it very much. It's OEG, OE, OE Global Ecosystem. Uh, I like this image because you see the staff, there are the little bees working every day for us, for the organization. And then you have uh, the board as it is uh, with personalities of open education global in the world working each uh, in their region. And uh, I can tell you that the involvement is requires a lot of time. Um, then there are the sustaining members who are the ambassadors and and very important because of course there 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 is not only the the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation but also the sustaining members are very important and and the the institution members, the individual members, all together, who are working nowadays. Where Lisa has set up a committee on membership, so I am I am taking this opportunity to tell you that OEG is working on uh, our relation with the members, and then of course uh, you have all the partners. I'm thinking of all educational. Um, institution in the world we are working with in particular the the i'm thinking of uh, icde and the unesco but there are many many others and uh, finally this is about region at international level and we will be working in the coming months on, on that now that a uh, part of the governance uh, questions that I've been working on a lot uh, in the past year will be over. So thank you again to have adopted the bylaws. And now I leave the floor to Marcela Morales and Igor Lesko to present you the board election. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Perrin. So I think I'm going to take over this specific section and then I'm going to hand over to Marcella. Uh, so congratulations on the bylaws being adopted. Um, that's really the outcome of a long process. And thank you also, Perrin, for driving this work within the bylaws and policies committee at the board level. Much appreciated. Um, here from our side, we just want to really say a few words about the upcoming board elections. So as you know, every year uh, we have this uh, election process where we nominate a certain number or where we elect a certain numbers of number of board members. This year, uh, we have to elect five board members and we opened the call for nominations about a month ago. That process, the call for nominations is now closed. And at this point in time, we have got 10 nominations. You can see the spread of nominations from different countries. We have got candidates from the United States, Canada, Mexico, South Africa, France, Japan, and Nepal. There are two individual members who submitted uh, nominations and the rest of them are representatives of OEG member institutional um, uh, institutions and we actually have some of the members who submitted nominations present on this call as well so good luck uh, during the election process um, just to let you know that the election process starts on the 5th of september which is next week on thursday 
we have to elect uh, five uh, board members during this year's election cycle. Right? So that's uh, shortly about the election process. And um, yes, and we will also be appointing two additional board members, that, that, but that process is going to unfold throughout the sort of September, October month. Yeah. Okay. And can we maybe just move to the next slide, please? Oh, no, I can advise, uh, advance. Yeah, sorry. So, and, and here in this section, we just want to give you a little bit of an update about OI Global's activities. Um, so as you all know, well, first of all, again, welcome to all of the members uh, present on this call. It's wonderful on this call. It's wonderful to see you to see many of you here. As you are already aware, Open Education Global is an international nonprofit organization uh, dedicated to supporting and advancing open education worldwide. And of course, we do this uh, together with our 400 plus individual and institutional members uh, around the world. That includes all of you here on this call plus also collaborations with other organizations uh, who are our strategic partners. Um, our, main area, our, main, our main areas of focus are really structured within the three areas of focus, and that's field building, knowledge exchange, and value co-creations. Uh, these, the, these are the three main pillars, uh, strategic pillars articulated in our strategic plan 2021-2030 called Open, education, uh, Open for, for Public Good. Um, and so within those areas, we really focus on fostering collaborations, sharing of ideas, mainstreaming of open education worldwide. One of our main activities is really um, on building the global community of support and practice. Uh, so, and that's primarily through the networks, through the events, and so the platforms uh, that we co-create co or that we co-organize uh, and support and facilitate. Um, so if you want to learn more about our strategic plan, um, maybe we can just uh, include a link there in, in the chat window. Um, it's available on our website and it's available in three different languages. It's Spanish and English, Spanish and French. Um, and now in the upcoming slides, we just want to really speak about some of those activities that we do uh, in the context of these three main pillars, uh, value co-creation, uh, knowledge exchange and field building. And one of those important areas is our annual Open Education Global Conference. You know, this is one of our seminal events, um, which is really important. Uh, we have the upcoming Global Conference now in Brisbane, Australia, from the 13th to the 15th of November. And we hope to see many of you there. Um, it's, it is a really important event. Uh, please visit the conference website uh, for more information about, we, we have announced the keynote speakers already. We have just also published the draft uh, conference program as well. It's a very rich program. Uh, we will have over 130 sessions. So there's uh, much to look forward to. Um, and so, yes, uh, if, and we also have registrations open. Uh, so if I can maybe just ask to please include that link in the chat window as well. And so again, we issue a warm welcome and invitation to all of you to come and join us in Brisbane in Australia. So that's Open Education Global. And perhaps one of the other areas that I would like to highlight from my side is also the Network of Open Organizations, uh, which is an alliance of diverse organizations and leaders in open education. Um, uh, committed to advancing uh, or advancing global access to knowledge. Um, the inspiration for the network and for the work of the network really comes from the adoption of the 2019 UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources. Um, and as such, as a collective, the network really aims to support practitioners and also um, um, the national governments um, around the world in effective implementations of open educational resources through catalyzing actions on um, global, local, and regional open education initiatives that require concerted actions, coordinated actions uh, with a diverse range of stakeholders. Um, we also have some uh, members of the network present on this call here as well from the ICD. Thank you, Eba. We have got obviously Polymi as well, or Spark Europe, and some others. Uh, we do meet monthly uh, as a network. Open Education Global coordinates these meetups. So if you want to, to join these meetings, uh, please visit the, the network website. You will, you will find out more details about how to join these meetings. So that's from my side, I think, uh, Marcela, and I'm gonna hand over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Igor. And hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here with you. Thank you for 
uh, joining this call and helping us in this process, particularly for the um, bylaws changes. And I want to say thank you to Perrin for helping us in this process, which has been extensive. And we're very happy to be culminating in today's call. And from our side, I just wanted also to share a little about the work that we're doing. Um, now that they controls to everybody, but there we go. Um, so as you was saying, the purpose of um, of OE Global with this new strategic plan that we have, and even before, is to um, to create network of the um, the global community working with Open. But in doing that work, we also identify that different regions had different needs. And with that purpose, and in line with our strategic plan, we have two regional nodes that are addressing the specific needs. From one side, the OILATAM, which is the Latin America region, where we have this community uh, of practice with, uh, we're working right now with 10 countries of Latin America, which all contribute to the work that we're doing, particularly in Spanish. We did um, gather uh, leaders from the region that were working with uh, with open educational resources, and we even extended to other open practices within the region to understand what exactly they needed. So once we did that work with them, we identified two main areas of focus, which was the uh, professional development and sharing with the world the state of art of OE LATAM. So you can see the work that we have been doing. This is a network that was uh, started in 2019. And uh, in the website, you can see some of the resources that the community has been creating since then. And on the other side, we have the OE Global Francophone, which we're very happy to have Korean leading. And uh, this particular uh, region, or this particular node, I'm sorry, is focused on um, French speaking countries and also addressing and the needs of Frank. Oh, do you want to speak about it, uh, Karine, or can I just go ahead? Um, I, I funded this network and now have more than uh, 2,000 recipients of uh, our monthly webinar. And, uh, this Friday, it will be Colin de Ligera in a podcast dedicated to you know how he has involved himself during the year. So it's a, a new format. And uh, yes, it's um, a fantastic community, and I hope uh, there will be a lot of um, future opportunities and very soon a web page uh, in Open Education Global websites. Uh, but for the time being, as you see, if you know some francophones, do not hesitate to send them the link to OEG Connect. Thank you, Alan, to have created these. The space that's, for communication. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are from more than 38 countries, huh? the people in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be francophone in non francophone countries too. Thank you. Wonderful. And I think that the purpose is really uh, that uh, primarily focusing on capacity building and awareness raising of these communities being created around the world to support the specific needs of regions or, in this case, language resources. And uh, hopefully, and in line with our strategic plan, we would be able to create other nodes that would address specific needs of either regions or communities uh, in particular that they have other needs. And now I would like to share the floor with my colleague, Heather Bleacher, that uh, several of you already know. And she's the director of CCCOER, and we would also like to hear from our staff. So Heather, if you're okay with it, I'll set, I'll share the floor with you and you can share a little about CCC OER and the program, program of OPAR. Yes, thank you, Marcella. Uh, my name is Heather Blicker and this year has been a pivotal one for CCC OER um, as we take the opportunity to reimagine the future of this, this very strong community of practice. Um, our focus is North America and community and technical colleges and through surveys, we've actually found that our efforts are reaching beyond North America and community colleges. And so with the executive council and committees uh, taking part, we are approaching strategic planning to align with OE Global strategic plan. And we're still continuing to provide monthly learning and networking opportunities to the community uh, where we tackle topics like artificial intelligence, um, anti-racism, inclusive access, and more, all in relation to OER. So whatever the future holds, we're very excited to adapt and try new ideas to support the community. And with OFAR, 
Um, OFAR is led by CCC OER and the College of the Canyons with generous funding from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. And we are pleased to have Laura Dunn on board as the project director. And as OFAR is about to launch its fifth year, we're finding that participants in the California Community Colleges uh, have more knowledge of anti-racism coming into the program, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, in, and because of this, in the coming year, we'll be completing a comprehensive program review with focuses in both DEI and instructional design to ensure the currency, accuracy, and accessibility of the course content and the framework, as well as explore opportunities to share more of the course content um, you know, uh, and the behind the scenes work involved in the program in the form of a toolkit for anyone interested in adapting the program to their own institution. Wonderful. Would anyone else like to add anything to that? I know we've got we've got people involved in the programs here, Liz or or James. Or you can add on the chat as well if you if you want. And also the links are there, and uh, both both uh, spaces have the opportunity to network and and share for both of, actually for all of the projects. So thank you, Heather. Um, maybe now we can share the floor with somebody that most of you will know, which is our colleague Alan Levine. Uh, Alan, can we share the mic with you? I'm speaking about some of our other projects that we're working on. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Marcella. Uh, we'll be really excited to uh, announce next week the uh, short list of finalists for the Open Education Awards for Excellence. Uh, that'll be published on uh, uh, next Tuesday. And uh, so get anticipation to see a list of really fantastic uh, nominees. And then we'll be doing a, a live announcement uh, on our OEG webcast on September 18th. And that was really exciting last year. That was one of the biggest turnouts we had for one of the webcasts that we've been uh, doing the last couple of years uh, to add to the event queue. And then, of course, uh, very well-known uh, second week of March is Open Education Week. And uh, as we find out, it doesn't always happen exactly in that that week. And so people schedule events ongoing. But we had a really great uh, turnout last year. And we uh, certainly count on people thinking about what they might be doing uh, for uh, March of 2025 for Open Education Week. And so that's always a very successful community-driven activity. Uh, we just try to assemble everything that's going on, but everybody else plans their uh, Open Education Week activities. And most people here have been very active over the years. And, and then also we've been doing uh, our OEG Voices podcast since 2020. Uh, getting ready to do uh, the episode. It's this one, you really want to watch this one and listen because uh, we have uh, who's here in the room, Rajiv Jangiangi, um, who said so many beautiful, fantastic, quotable things. Um, it'll be a highlight. And also, um, we also have um, Katsu Shigeta from Japan, who uh, has been with the board for such a long time and giving that perspective. And uh, th these are just a chance to give some insight to the board members. But generally, we just try to have conversations with um, practitioners and people involved uh, in the community uh, just to get to know them better and, and share their work through audio uh, format. Um, so, oh, yeah. Thank you, Amanda. It's it's always fun to do. Um and also as a sneak preview for the conference, not everybody can get to Brisbane, but we have a, a plan to run a radio station during the conference to bring you uh, some of the events during the conference. And then, of course, uh, you've seen a lot um, uh, OE Global Connect, which we're, um, we have about 1900 people have signed up from all over the world uh, to be part of that community. And we're always trying to uh, make it a place that can be a hub uh, for people to share and uh and connect with each other. Thank you, Alan. That's wonderful. Um, and I think that's that's it for for the update from our side. Uh, as you can see, it's just a quick snippet of the work that we're doing, and uh, as a way of an invitation that, that for you as members can join in any of these efforts. If you have not heard from them, we are always available and happy to open the doors. And if you want to say like 
be part of some one of the live shows of Alan or participate in OE Week and you don't find a way of doing it, please reach out to us. Any one of us would be more than happy to, to show you the way. And this is just a very quick summary of the work that we're doing. Uh, we are constantly sharing information of our work through the newsletter and a social media that our colleague Ila is, is very active and constantly updating. So please uh, reach out to us if you there's anything that we can do to support you. And uh, we're always very happy to hear from you. And so now, Karina, I think that we wanted to leave some space uh, for a Q&A session and open the mic uh, to our members and to our board members as well, if there's anything else that we would want to, that we want to share. And I see Lisa with a raised hand. So please go ahead, Lisa. Um, hello, everybody. I just wanted to recognize um, all the work that went into the bylaws. Um, this was a multi-year endeavor. And the, the board members, the staff, the our executive directors, former board members have all been engaged in this work. And I really wanted to just recognize all of that work that went in to get us to this point. This was really going to position us for the future of OE Global. And also the work that you're seeing that our staff is doing is absolutely incredible. So beautifully aligned with our strategic plan and the work that we wanna do. And just wanted to thank you all for all of the hard work that you've been doing for our membership and for open education. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. You have done a tremendous work also with Lina in this regard and much more. And uh, maybe, it's as I, I said, it's a publicly that I wanted to to retell you that you have contributed a lot to everything you just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, Rajiv, would you like to to be our icebreaker <laughs> and <laughs> give us some news from where you are, where you stand for the time being, and uh, invite other members maybe to share them. Certainly happy to happy to share, but uh, I was actually first going to acknowledge, uh, you know, folks just from serving uh, on the board for the past year and and, and some change, um, uh, just witnessing the tremendous amount of work that takes place behind the scenes. Um, and I, I know uh, the, we've just talked about the work on the bylaws, but uh, I also want to acknowledge that even just this meeting, this is a new development for the organization, but it's so critical for uh, uh, such a large global organization to provide more than one opportunity for members to come together, not necessarily just, uh, uh, you know, at the conference, uh, important uh, as, of course, that is to, to be there in person. Uh, but I just want to acknowledge the thought uh, it took to, to come up with this. And then, of course, uh, to the team for putting this together and facilitating uh, organizing it all. So hopefully this is something we can we can look forward to is, is ongoing multiple opportunities uh, with people's feedback as well. But I uh, just want to uh, refer to the to, to the good thought and care that's gone behind this. Um, from from uh, my corner of the world over here, I will share that uh, we've been involved in a province-wide study uh, across the province of Ontario uh, in Canada, where I work, um, uh, looking at the capacity of all colleges, all universities, and all Indigenous institutes, uh, and their capacity to support open educational practices more broadly. Uh, it's one of the major initiatives in, in partnership with uh, eCampus Ontario, which of course is also a part of, of this broader network. And so we're looking forward to harnessing that research uh, to help uh, intentionally uh, uh, build capacity and provide guidance along the along those lines um, to the sector uh, in Ontario. Uh, so that's that's a that's a useful um, initiative. Hopefully, other jurisdictions will be interested in following suit as well. And certainly, uh, please consider this an open invitation to reach out. We have an openly licensed um, research instrument uh, that supports this work. It's available in English and in French at the moment. Although I'm sure we could uh, translate it into additional languages as well. Um, Perhaps uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to to um, uh, to hand the mic over to a fellow board member, uh, one of my dear friends from from Italy, Paola. Uh, if you if you're ready uh, to, to to grab the mic. Hi everyone, greetings from Monza, where I live. But the picture that you see behind me is something that uh, relates to the eastern northern part of Italy. Uh, <clears throat> 
Uh, I work in Politecnico di Milano, where we uh, try daily to advance open education progresses uh, through uh, mainly uh, blended learning opportunities for both faculty members and re uh, PhD students. That's how the, the span of the activities that we do there so far. Uh, we don't have an open education policy, nor uh, great involvement at the governmental level. So that's where we try our best to advance. And I also work with, uh, with the Spark Europe uh, together with librarians in the European network of open education librarians called uh, the NOL. And uh, what we do within the NOL is to share knowledge, first of all, and support uh, uh, peer librarians to um, get to know open education more closely uh, from a very practical perspective and support them uh, with their local projects. So uh, if you want to take a look at uh, the resources that we share, everything is CC BY and we try our best to uh, support the localization process that uh, provides uh, most of the languages for the main resources that we share. Who wants to go next? I can give a quick update on um, things happening. In, we, um, the Maricopa Community Colleges just received a one and a half million dollar grant to develop a rubric of rubrics for peer review of open education. And we're partnering with 13 higher education and um, national organizations across America. Um, what we're going to be doing is this this rubric of rubrics will look at seven different elements from subject, subject matter expertise to um, accessibility to, um, oh my gosh, there's so many different elements of this rubric. Um, and we will be developing a platform to have these reviews conducted. So imagine an opportunity for us to do peer review in many different facets um, for um, all of our open education work. And so the plan is to, um, this was granted by the federal government here and will be shared globally. And so we're really excited because we have institutions from all over the United States working on this. Um, and then we also have um, some international partners as well who cannot be granted because these are federal funds, but are engaged in our work. So we can't wait to share that with you in the future. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Marion. Hi, I'm Marion uh, from Taipei Medical University in Taiwan. Yeah, also I represent, I represent uh, the Taiwan uh, Consortium of Open uh, Education and uh, Open Courseware. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, right now uh, in Taiwan, uh, Taiwan members, we are about uh, 20 members uh, uh, participate in uh, OE Global. And also, uh, we are uh, doing uh, closely with our government, uh, uh, the Minister of the Education, uh, and promoting the OER or and the open education, and we are uh, especially in higher education uh, as well. Uh, but also we are promoting our content because the higher education provide a uh, 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 produce a lot of contents, so we uh, pro provide those content to uh, to the K twelve uh, area. And uh, right now we are we are trying to uh, uh submit a new project for uh to the uh, minister of education about the next three years, and we are trying to build some uh open textbook in Chinese, and also we want to promote OER uh the concept and the, the resource to the uh South Asia, uh Southeast Asia area. So uh and also we are trying to uh adapt some technology into the OER, for example, the AI in OER, such as uh, this kind of content will be uh, uh, in our uh, project with the uh, uh, Minister of Education. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, basically uh, what we do in Taiwan, yeah. So who will be the next? I can Maybe speak. the first, like, so I am also the representative of the Sustainable Member of Open Education Trust that is supported by the Université Numérique. And uh, it's a, 
they are working uh, hard. We have a MOOC platform and eight digital universities at thematics in France. And uh, they, are, they are also having like a open education global uh, separate uh, project uh, dedicated, for example, for French, French uh, writing and uh, learning. <laughs> but this is just an example of many other projects they have. Uh, and they also do international cooperation in uh, some African countries in the networks. Um, so, for example, Igor and myself were at eLearning Africa in Rwanda this year, and uh, we have met uh, all Open Education uh, France and the many, many institutes there. However, the most interesting is maybe this year that a strategy is currently being uh, drafted, and in particular by my own vice president for digitization at the University of Lille. And so we are working uh, quite closely. You know, uh, they have um, together with the councillor at the ministry, they both are working on, uh, on writing a first proposal that will be an answer to the open science uh, strategy in France. So this is uh, very impressive. Uh, what I read uh, already is very interesting and impressive. And uh, I am uh, looking forward to uh, the work that takes quite a long time because, as you know, open education and open science are... Um, does have open in the name, but it's quite the, the the challenges are quite different. So this is a only little point. I have also shared with you the the open education review from a Barbara class at the University of Geneva. That is a, in in several languages, in any languages you want, and there is a a call that is that will be soon ending on the digital comments for education. Now, I've been writing an article this weekend. <laughs> this has been a lot of work uh, uh, because I myself have uh, my own ideas on uh, what we could do next at um, open education in an open education lab that, that I would love to set up in Europe. This is when um, this is now next. Next would be Still someone from the board? It's there. Eba, please, you are not from the board, but you have so many active contributions that I would love to hear about your news. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for setting up this meeting and uh, allowing me to join. Uh, I'm an individual member for at OE Global. <coughs> um, and I know that um, that is... Um, and, um, I mean, I don't have the, the right to to vote or to um, be engaged in those kind of activities, but I very much appreciated what you were saying, Perrin, that you put a lot of uh, attention to individual members and uh, uh, looking forward to hear our opinions as well. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm also uh, in the board for ICDE, the International Council for Open for the International Council for Open and Distance Education, and I'm also chair in the OER Advocacy Committee for ICDE. I'm an independent researcher and professor in innovation and uh, open online learning and also involved in the network of open orgs, which I think it's a really, really good initiative. So thank you so much to all the global who have um, initiated this and also hosting it and all the work you're doing for that. Uh, well, um, what are my needs uh, is to, to be in this uh, community with the open advocates uh, as you are in all global. Uh, so I really took the opportunity and uh, Participate, try to participate as much as I can in those, those activities. And by the way, in 2022, I was very happy but as I was awarded uh, the award for open leadership by All Global. So thank you again for that. It meant a lot for me. It really meant a lot. And I think this initiative with the awards really mean a lot for those of us who work hard, uh, Quite, quite often volunteer based, but also to our organizations to be recognized in a community like this. It is really, really important. And um, uh, I'm looking forward for the 2024 award winners. Mm. So, um, yes, uh, mostly, as I said, uh, uh, what I'd like with this is to be involved in a community who advocate for uh, the common good about openness and to try to reach the, the sustainability development goals uh, with education for all and quality education for all. 
because it is a human rights and it is about the inclusiveness, uh, sustainability, uh, scalability, and equity. And uh, the more we are who can work for that from different kind of perspectives, the better world we will get, and it's better for the people and for the planet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, but if I may, maybe just I just want to give a space, Perrin, if you don't mind, to Glenda to speak a little, a little bit about the recently formed uh, network on open education, the Unity Unit Win Network. Uh, Glenda, go ahead. Thank you, Igor. Lovely to be here. Lovely to see you all, all the way from Cape Town. Um, yes, uh, so I think that uh, some of you would have heard about the new uh, UNESCO Unit Win Network. Um, if not, uh, this is a formalized network um, that is run out of the University of Nantes through Colin de Luegra, who Perrine uh, mentioned earlier will be speaking somewhere for her. Um, and we, the, the story sort of goes as we sat down in Nantes in 2022 and started planning to try and get together as many of the chairs in open um, to, to form a network where we could work together um, and benefit from um, having people from really across the world. Um, so we were launched in June, so we really knew. Lots of, lots of ideas happening, no funding at all, so we're working on that. Um, but we're also trying to work on smaller plans that we can do to bring our knowledge together. Uh, we have 16 members, so we have members from... Um, South Africa, Brazil, uh, Lebanon, Tunisia, Spain, France, Canada, New Zealand, um, not, uh, Slovenia. Um, so it's it's a, a really interesting range of, of, of people with interests in open education. We're thinking of looking at uh, connections between open education and AI. I think we're all doing that, but uh, I think you might know that Colin is in fact the chair in open education and artificial intelligence. Uh, we're also very interested in launching a project with students and all doing our own kind of research and drawing it together around how we can bring students into open education conversations. So it's still very new. Um, we've got a few things coming up. Um, I will be in the Transforming Knowledges for Africa's Future uh, conference in Addis. Um, and a number of other UNESCO chairs will also be there. So I'm hoping that that would be something, a place to promote open education um, as a solution um, and not an add-on. Um, and we're doing also a boot camp, small boot camp to try and plan for funding and futures. And I will also be in Brisbane. So I really look forward to seeing everyone there and, and sharing more about the network and, and discussing how we can collaborate. Thanks. Thank you, Glenda. <clears throat> any questions? So, uh, yeah, so I think you, if you have any questions, you can reach out. Maybe, Glenda, you can also provide your contact details if people have more information for, about the network itself. That would be great. But we are also at the top of the hour and people are starting to drop off from the, from the meeting. So maybe we should think about concluding the the actual meeting. So I'm going to hand over to Perrin to make that call. Sorry, I was uh, just looking for Diana, maybe, to join us and uh, say some more words. Diana Hernandez, who is the past director. Diana, do you, hear, do you hear us? Would you like to tell us your recent activities? No, Diana does not, obviously. Good. And, and Muhammad Hassan, would you be so kind and, and present yourself and activities? This would be nice. Sure. Um, my name is Muhammad Hassan. I'm uh, from New Jersey um, at Kenya University. And Kenya University is a is a really amazing institute. Uh, and we are doing a great job for open access. We started our efforts uh, back in 2019 with only seven sections that uh, did not require students to purchase books. Now we have over 20% of our sections uh, that do not require students to purchase book. Uh, this is uh, this is definitely changing the way that we do things. Also, uh, we have been promoting 
faculty where we are actually working with faculty to develop curriculum that is open access and curate content for students that are there. I, I just found out that Alan uh, works with work with uh, Mia Zamora, one of our English faculty member who does amazing, amazing job uh, providing uh, accessible uh, knowledge to students. And when I say accessible knowledge, uh, I really uh, mean that because our students, we are an HSI, HSI Institute and uh, about 70 to 75% of our students are uh, colored students. So understanding the way that the colored students work, how students react to different things is completely different. Uh, we are living in a time where uh, students are coming up with a different educate, different learning styles or and also language that I don't hear. I don't know what that language is. A uh, couple of days ago or not a couple of weeks ago, I grounded my son for saying cap in talking to me. And I'm like, what, what the heck that cap means? And what kind of language are you using at home? Later, I found out that, that cap means lie. And I'm like, what language is this? So our students are coming up with a different language. It's not just cultural differences. It's not just financial di differences. It's the differences uh, in language. It's the difference in, uh, in, in on a wide variety of areas. So open education resources, the way that we are approaching at Kane University is different. Uh, uh, through my research, we found out that uh, students are having issues where uh, they do not have uh, internet at home. So uh, Kane University just purchased laptops with internet so that when they go home, they can have access to content. Yes, that is open, but also at home, they can have access. Um, we are also changing our policies uh, of camera use or on in classes where we, we know certain students may not be able to turn the cameras on because they have 10 other siblings uh, in their in their same one bedroom bedroom that they have. So we are changing a lot of things there. We have opened up um, uh, an artificial reality lab uh, that students have access to uh, that actually provide them and allow them to use it anytime, not just them, also their parents, because a lot of students that come in, their parents have very uh, little knowledge of different things. So when they come in, they can actually practice public speaking, not just students, but their parents too, uh, using a virtual reality headset. Uh, so they'll come in, they'll put the headset on, and they will uh, they will just practice uh, in their language uh, or in English, and that allows them to have learned you know how to talk to people. So you know we are really looking at and working with different ends, and we are hoping working with all of you to do great things uh, for our students and for entire community. Do I need to hand off to someone? All right, I'll hand off to Marion. Marion Spokerish. Oh, Marianne already spoke. Uh, so let's do Terry. Terry? Okay. Not maybe that is Canales? Uh, good morning from here. It's morning. Uh, thank you for um, calling on me. Uh, so I'm from San Antonio. San Antonio College in San Antonio, Texas, USA. And uh, we recently received our uh, three-year grant for um, open textbooks. And uh, we recently hosted about 80 faculty over the summer to for, for professional development. And um, it was really exciting because um, I think that inclusive access has really been um, in grain. My colleague Susan is also here um, and we're trying to um, re um, vamp, resurface the, the open education and um, my goal is also to increase the knowledge in the other open um, culture and open science so that we can have more of a, a impact in the community um, because right now we need it. And I think it's going to be a great time. The grant um, was specifically created. So not only are we paying for instructional designers and of course um, librarians, uh, we are also looking at um, student feedback. We're paying students for their feedback, which is amazing. And I love it. That's my one contribution that I could say I, I put in the writing of the grant. 
And, um, and I just wanted to encourage individuals who do write for grants that you may not get it the first time, but take your notes and try again. Don't let that first time um, lead you uh, away because we received this grant after learning what we did wrong or uh, what we feel like we did wrong. And we applied again and we received it. So um, I'm always on the side of hope when it comes to, and I think that's why um, open education or open is such a great fit for me. And I will um, pick, um, let me see. Um, I'm looking, did Liz talk yet? Oh, well, our CCC OER updates were covered by um, Heather, but thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, I Robert think uh, the people who closed the camera, I guess, that don't wish to, to speak. Okay. But if, if someone wants to speak, it's, it's the last opportunity. <laughs> and uh, because um, we have been... Um, it has been already uh, more than one hour, so it's uh, it has been a terrific time together, I think, and it's time to for each of you to speak. I understand that Susan Cusio works with you, Beatrice Canales. Susan, I'm sorry, Susan works with with you. Yes, Puccio. I think she. Yes, I'm here. Yes, thank you very much. The, so you you are working with uh, Beatrice and, and doing the. Uh, um, I'm gonna turn up my volume just a little bit. Susan works at our sister college at Palo Alto College, and she and I have been. I don't think we've met even in person in our small city, and we have. No, we haven't. We have maybe once, um, but it. No, right? No, we've 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 done a lot of things on teams. I know. <laughs> and we did the achievement achieving a dream. The achievement of a dream. We did that together. Um that was in collaboration. So hi, my name is Susan Buccio. I am one of the reference librarians who focus in OER at Palo Alto Library. Um, what you can see behind me is not Palo Alto <laughs> College. It is Setsi, which is the Southside Educational Training Center. And I've got some wonderful news. Uh, one of the instructors here in the career and technical uh, requested um, training manuals for, for forklift um, training in OER. And that was like awesome. I had to go, I'm... As you can see, I'm really excited when faculty can come up to me and ask, hey, you got this in OER? Or can you tell me more about that? That means um, since 2014, when we started this, right, Beatrice? Do you remember? Yeah, it was about 2014 when we started the initiative. And I get people now asking, can you help me uh, find some materials? Can you um, help? Um, I want some of this over here and some of this over here. Or can you even read my textbook? I had a faculty member wanted me to go through their textbook that they posted in OER Commons. Um, and that, that just, that makes my day. <laughs> it really does. So thank you guys for doing doing this. Um, I don't think I would have ever oh, been able to do things. So, um, oh, I don't think I'd be able to do what I'm doing right now without you guys' support. Um, OE Global is awesome. Thank you. I don't know how I'm... Well, that was a perfect conclusion. We can't answer that. She would have to go to the training. The orientation. So thank you very much, Suzanne. Um, I think when the camera is closed, people don't particularly want to, to come and speak, but I thank them to have stayed until now. 
we have gone through the agenda, the bylaws are adopted, which is great news, as you ha may have understood, despite it may be not of great interest to you, it is of great interest to us. <laughs> and uh, we are very happy to have met uh, new faces as far as I'm concerned. Well done. I'm uh, um, also part of uh, the open recognition uh, community. So I, I love the fact that uh, we heard you and, uh, and your tremendous work. Thank you very much all. Thank you to the staff, the board, the members. And let's continue that way. I hope there will be, I am sure there will be other opportunity to have such a, an online event in future uh, and uh, so that we can reconnect, reconnect better with our member and and, and it, it is so important to us. Thank you very much all and uh, I hope to see you in Brisbane where I will be. <laughs> so you see, I have a lot of support of my university because Australia is really far away. And maybe then we'll uh, also go to Dubai where we will have the UNESCO meeting for the, the third me meeting rega regarding the, the, the high level meeting for, sorry, for the OER recommendation. So this is very important. And um, as you know, uh, you just thank us for being there, and we thank UNESCO for having been always very supportive too, in uh, in the in the fact that we we are helping reach the sustainable um, objectives, development goals. We call them the objective de développement durable. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Take care. See you next time. Yes.